Are you curious on how men view pineapples on an emotional level? Would a better understanding help stop you from being so horribly confused by everything men do? Well, here's your answer. Today we'll discuss seven concepts on how men view pineapples from an emotional standpoint that will drastically transform your ability to have a successful relationship with any man. Number one, which is motivation. I want you to understand that this motivation, which is a combination of just the natural hunger we feel, procreate, and then also the desire we feel for the woman we find the most attractive, which just is kind of is in turn the same thing, the desire to procreate, comes from the same place, okay? It's internal and it's constant. I want you to understand even the men who are actively celibate, even the men who are not participating in uh, anything pineapple related, they still are internally motivated by that and still feel those emotions. So if you, that's how you want to describe it. But those still exist inside him as long as he's hormonally regular. You know what I mean? Um, there's nothing going wrong with him. That's how we evolved simply because the men who didn't have that motivation, didn't have that hunger, didn't have that desire to pursue pineapples they died off okay they died off simply because they didn't procreate and because they didn't have the desire to they didn't have the hunger to get up and actually do it so they didn't end up producing more offspring and their uh their lineage uh ended there but i want you to understand that even in that motivation it presents itself in different ways in different shapes and in different forms but you're always going to see action from us men based on that internal motivation. So let me give you an example of how that internal motivation can present itself in different ways. If I'm sitting on the couch and I'm thinking to myself, damn, you know, I like these video games, but even better than getting having playing a lot of video games and leveling up in my favorite video game would be getting in some Squirtle. Now let's pretend dating apps don't exist, right? For most men before the dating apps, they would have to say to themselves, okay, well now I want Squirtle. I'm gonna have to actually get up off of my couch put down the video game controller and I'm going to have to go out with my friends to a bar or a club, meet some girls, talk to some girls, be interesting, be charismatic, be funny, tell some jokes, show, uh, tell some pickup lines, and maybe I might have a shot at getting a little bit of Squirtle that night. But I want you to understand why did he take that action in the first place to actually put down the controller, get up off his couch, go get ready, uh, go make himself look nice, brush his teeth. Uh, he hasn't brushed his teeth in a couple days, get out of bed, wipe the nut stains off of his pants and put his uh, nice pants on and go out and meet you and try to be funny and interesting. That was all motivated by his internal desire and hunger to satisfy himself with pineapples okay if he didn't have that we wouldn't all be here because that internal motivation is what gets those lazy men even the laziest of lazy men up to actually do something and be someone in order to get that satisfied the reason i bring up motivation is because it's a very important emotion that men are feeling on a consistent basis that is part of the process of how this goes from start to finish how he ends up in your face telling you jokes and being nice to you being interesting right starts off with that internal motivation that he feels to actually get the thing desire is not about how you can get on your hands and knees and and start scrubbing the floor and you know be in your maid outfit and say hey uh, isn't this so amazing how i scrub the floor and i'm the best wife ever although that sounds a little bit like role play but assuming it's not role play you getting on your hands and knees and scrubbing the floor in your maid outfit is not making us desire you anymore and in fact the less you do to try to make yourself the most desirable and the more to me and the more you invest in yourself that's actually when you become the most desirable and the most attractive right because our subconscious hunger and attraction is always towards the women who are investing the most amount of energy in themselves for example right a girl who doesn't take care of herself doesn't take care of her hygiene doesn't take care of her skin hair nails nothing doesn't even upkeep her own like internal life doesn't uh work on herself doesn't doesn't try to grow in anything, just lazy, doesn't do anything versus a girl or woman who takes care of herself, takes care of her opinion or opinion, takes care of her appearance, goes to the gym, uh, takes care of her skin, all that good stuff works on herself. A lot of hours invested in herself. She paints, she does art, she goes out to events, right? All this good stuff. She chases her passions. All of these hours in the day. So uh, heavily focused on herself, what she thinks, what she wants, how she feels, 
all of that energy goes into her. Those are the women who end up having the most confidence. Those are the women who end up having the most attractive aura. Those are the women who we as men desire the most. And desire is one of the strongest, most intense, intense emotions when it comes to the lead up of pineapples happening because we have the natural hunger but it's stimulated when we actually desire a woman and we actually desire a woman when she is investing the most into herself that we can in turn find her attractive next we have hunger so hunger is very high when we first meet a woman right that we like or find desirable and because we don't know you at that point uh, your approach determines if it increases drastically or decreases drastically. Now, I want us to pause there. When you just meet them, do you find generally that the guys are the most interested in you when they first meet you? And then it's for whatever reason, right after that, it just seems to go uh, downhill. Uh, the reason I ask you that is because there is, I, I guess we could call it the shiny new toy theory, but it's kind of the idea that men mostly right their peak of their interest is right when they don't know you and you're a new hot commodity that they can get to know and discover more about which is why my hunger for you at the very beginning subsequently my desire for you at the very beginning is so high now you have to understand that hunger is like commingled with also my innate desire to love i'm not able to be motivated by love what I'm motivated by is my desire for pineapples but and my hunger for pineapples. In the process of meeting you, if that gets satisfied too quickly, I then can't continue on the journey of getting to know you and growing my relationship with you that I eventually discover the love that I was also actually looking for but was suppressed by the hunger and desire I felt to get pineapples. I know that sounds a little bit complicated. What I basically mean is that, yes, we feel the emotions of love and we want love and we're capable of love as well. What's even more prevalent than that on top of the love is our desire for pineapples and to get pineapples, unfortunately. Okay. Now, in the process of me chasing after pineapples and wanting more pineapples, if you approach it the right way and allow me to continue having this hunger, continue having this desire for you, continue being in pursuit of you, being in my masculine energy, all that good stuff. In the process of me pursuing more pineapples, I'm actually going to discuss discover some love here as well because in the process of me not necessarily being satisfied me not necessarily uh, satiating my hunger for you i'm also going to be getting to know you i'm also going to be growing my relationship with you i'm also going to be if you're doing it right asking questions listening letting him talk about himself all that good stuff i'm also going to be growing my emotional connection to you as well and all of these things that are happening in the process of us building our relationship together is what's going to allow me to discover the feelings of love even though i was chasing after the feelings of pineapples now let's talk about complacency the very first emotion that he has when he finally sleeps with you especially when it's very soon and very quick without a lot of work put in is complacency let's think of the example i want to take this away from dating let's think about if you were to go to a movie and you step inside that movie theater you got your popcorn you get your uh your nice seat you booked your seat two weeks in advance you got your snacks maybe you like m&ms maybe you like um sour patch kids maybe for some of you weirdos you like licorice i don't know i don't know i don't know why people even enjoy licorice it's weird to me you prepared yourself for the past month for this movie uh, and you're so in so much anticipation for this movie you're ready to uh, spend the next two hours of your life consuming this movie and only for you to realize that in the movie theater they literally give you the intro they tell you the characters and then right after that and they tell you exactly how it ends and that's the end of the movie and all of that anticipation that you built up all of that you know readiness that you came prepared to consume something and get fully invested into that movie was over in three minutes. There was no buildup. The same way, that's disappointing, is the same way men feel disappointed when they finally sleep with you, right? Especially when it comes right at the beginning. 
And the, the, the fact that they want to discover love is underneath the fact that they're going to try to pursue pineapples. But the only way they can properly discover love a lot of the time is by pursuing pineapples. And then your job in allowing the approach to be positioned right is when he can discover love in the process of pursuing pineapples, okay? So the reason I say that is because complacency can set in very quickly when instead of him being allowed to use the funnel of wanting to pursue pineapples to discover how amazing and awesome you are, discover how deep your connection is, become more emotionally invested in you, figure out how much he loves and cares about you and how attached he is to you, right? And then getting pineapples and then knowing already even after he gets the pineapples how much he is invested in you and staying with you, now he gets the satisfaction of having the pineapples with you, having the experience with you, but now he no longer sees the purpose in continuing to grow and get to know you and grow the relationship with you. The mind doesn't understand I'm chasing after love. The, the mind just understands I'm chasing after the ability to procreate, which just means I'm chasing after the ability to have more pineapples. The feeling is so overwhelming that I feel like I accomplished what I came here to accomplish. And so they begin to think to themselves, what is there left to accomplish? So why would I continue putting in more investment into you emotionally when I feel like I've gotten what I came here to get? And so the equation stops making sense to him where he thinks to himself, okay, even if I think she's cool, why am I still here? What am I in pursuit of? I don't understand. This is why I say for men's emotions, they can't see, oh, I'm supposed to be here for the pursuit of love. They can't, they, it doesn't make sense. And because that stops making sense to them, why they're going to be ongoingly committed to you or motivated to continue growing this relationship or pursuing you, they just stop pursuing you. Or they become complacent and they drastically decrease um, the amount in which they pursue or chase after you. This is where it's going to get dark. Here comes validation, specifically self-validation. You are receiving, meaning when it's time for pineapples, I'm inserting myself inside of you. You are not just receiving me physically as a man. You are receiving me emotionally, mentally, spiritually, all of that. I want you to understand how that affects my own validation in myself. Because if you're receiving me, there's a process of understanding that I must meet a certain level of criteria or I must be amazing or awesome or be above some sort of threshold in order to be received by you. And even if your standards are low, still the idea or the concept that a lot of women will gladly receive me into them, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually, that must mean I must be of really high value or high quality. Even if it's not necessarily true, it still becomes a self-validating uh, prophet. I guess prophecy is the wrong word, but like a self-validating thing where the, the concept that I can actually do that and I can actually be received and accepted by you tells me through you that I must be valuable. I must be quality or else you wouldn't feel comfortable receiving me into you, right? Imagine there was an exclusive club in which only the most beautiful women on this planet Earth are being invited to. And let's say you go to the gym every day, you work hard on yourself every day, work hard on your body, you, you're you trying to get your uh, face structure right, you get braces, you do your hair every day, right? You, you do everything possible to be as attractive and have your appearance look as amazing as it possibly can, that hopefully one day they'll recognize you and accept you into the club of the most beautiful women on this Earth. And and one day, finally, you get accepted into this club of the most beautiful woman on earth. Now, even if someone doesn't tell you you're the most beautiful woman on earth, the moment you walk into that club, you will feel self-validated that I am here in an exclusive club only for the most beautiful of beautiful, only for the most uh, luscious and amazing of uh, and, uh, desirable of women because I am one of those most desirable women. And it becomes self-validating to be received by that exclusive club. And this is why, this is why the guys seem to uh, switch up on you or become all big headed when they finally sleep with you and don't show you the same respect when they sleep with you, especially at the beginning. 
because that validation that you've given him through that is what's allowed his ego to be stroked, his ego to be stroked. And now he's like, oh, <laughs> I know I'm the man. So I don't need to hear what you have to say. I don't need to try to spend more time with you or text you every day or call you every day to get validation. I've gotten the ultimate validation from you because regardless of whether you uh, don't call me or text me after this, I know that there is no bigger or larger validation I could get from you than you allowing me inside of you. So it doesn't matter what I do for you after this. I've already gotten the maximum amount of validation from you that I need. Number six is distraction. Men, a lot of times, will use pineapples as a way to distract themselves emotionally from themselves or their own life or their problems or their situations and circumstances. Because it's easier to focus your time and energy on something that will make you feel good in the short term rather than facing your long-term problems that bring you consistent pain. The reason I bring this up as to how men view pineapples on an emotional sense is because I also want you to understand the motivating factors behind why men might be going out and having all of this low-quality connection with you and other women. Validation is one of those reasons. Distraction is another one of those reasons because it's very easy to distract myself with the quick hit of dopamine I feel and the validation I feel when I sleep with you on the first night, the second night, the third night, very easily without doing much effort or work. And it's very easy for me to distract myself from the actual things I should be focusing my time and energy on, i.e. my job or uh, my business if I have one, right? Or the fact that I'm not doing anything with my life. Have you ever noticed that the guys who are the most broke have the most time to spend with you and have the most time to have pineapples with you? Yeah, that's because instead of putting their time and energy into the things that they should be doing, they're putting all their time and energy into chasing around kitty cat. That they're not caring about anything else because they want the quick hit of what they're here to distract themselves with. They're not here to distract themselves with a long-term serious relationship. They're not here to distract themselves with building a long lasting life uh, and partnership with you. I want to give you an example. OK, so if you are forced to wait in a long line rather than focusing on how long the line is, you're more likely to try to focus your energy on something, whether doing something, talking on the phone, whatever it may be, texting, whatever on something else that you don't spend all your time in agony or in pain thinking about how long this line is, thinking about how um, much time you'll have to wait. I literally went to Canada's Wonderland uh, like a week and a half ago, and we were in this long, long line for this roller coaster. And instead of us, uh, me and my friends, just sitting there and uh, being on the phone or just sitting there and being in this line, uh, waiting for this line to get shorter, we started playing charades. And the process of us playing the charades distracted ourselves from the how long this line was and the fact that we had to wait like an hour and like 20 minutes uh, to get to the front of this line. Let's get to pineapples from love. Pineapples from love is the deepest and most satisfying version of pineapples for men, but we don't understand how to chase love. We only understand how to chase pineapples. In the process of chasing pineapples, we discover love, okay? I know this one's not gonna make sense to you probably. It's mostly because you're not a man. That's okay. I'm trying to help you understand. Remember how I talked about the reason I had to bring everything up before I brought this up is because you need to understand the motivation. You need to understand the way we think. You need to understand what we go through because that's the only way you'll understand why we must first chase the thing that we were built to desire and want. In the process of that, you do the job of setting us in the right path emotionally and giving us the right pace doesn't mean you actually have to take action, right? But you just understand what we desire, what we're chasing after. You set us straight. In the process of us continuing to desire you and have that hunger for you, both physically, mentally, emotionally, all that good stuff, and want more access to you, we discover 
the love we have for you and the attachment we have towards you that even by the time we finally do have pineapples with you, even by the time we finally do get access to your squirtle, even by the time we are intimate with you, we recognize afterwards how invested we still are emotionally in you. And so the experience is much better because of how emotionally invested we are in you. And also afterwards, because the experience was so good, because we worked so hard to get to this point, similar to the great movie that you were anticipating for months and months and months and when you watched it it was two hours long and it was amazing is the same thing we walk away from after we have that experience with you and we say i need more of that when everything balances together when you get pineapples from love instead of pineapples for pleasure you get a guy satisfied but does it just because he's satisfied in terms of having his experience with you finally, he isn't necessarily complacent. Obviously, he's still going to have the hunger and desire to have pineapple. So when I say satisfied, I just mean he finally gets to experience all of you. And in the process of experiencing all of you, the feeling and the experience is so amazing because he's worked all this time through that motivation he's had to chase after pineapples or whatever it may be, chase after your squirtle, through that process, he's discovered you, he's grown with you, he's understood you, he's gotten to know you, he's uh, become more emotionally invested in you. And then by the time you do sleep with each other, he doesn't just say to himself, well, that was great, but I don't think I need anything more from you. He thinks to himself, well, that was amazing. And that was such an amazing experience. And I'm so glad I did it. I want to do it again. Actually, I want to do it for the rest of my life. Do you want to marry me?